Okay, this is going to be your uh, quick reference guide on how to use the trigonometric identities. And not every single one of them, but I picked the most popular kind that you are introduced to. And um, there's three things you could be asked to do, okay? Your teachers might ask you to simplify, they might ask you to verify, or they might ask you to solve. So I'm going to make three videos, the first one being oversimplification. Now, Keep in mind with these problems, uh, there is a thought process that you really need to do um, as you approach each problem. Uh, you always want to try, I'm going to kind of write down here um, your goal, okay? Pretty much your goal is to do whatever algebra you see. If I can spell algebra, here we go. Algebra. I always try algebra first. Um, then if I get stuck, I plug in an identity. So there's a lot of substitution in this unit. You're going to substitute a word for a definition. That's all that identity means. It's a, Identity is like a definition. And then uh, maybe algebra again. <laughs> Why can't I spell algebra? Algebra. Um, and then, um, you know, simplification. So that should be your approach every time. Now, um, I don't want to tell you that you always want to turn everything into sine and cosine and then see what happens because sometimes that's not the case. But I guess if you get desperate and you don't have an idea, then turn everything into sine and cosine and see what happens. Okay, that's kind of a last resort for me. Uh, let's do an example. I'm going to just do two examples in each video. Okay, um, in this one, uh, we are given cotangent times sine uh, plus cosine and we need to simplify this. Well, when you look at this, uh, I know there's addition, but you're not allowed to add these terms together. So I would looked and tried to do algebra first, but there's nothing that can combine. So my next step is to plug in an identity. Now sine and cosine are at their most basic form, so do not plug anything in for those. I would leave those alone. But cotangent, you've got choices, okay? Uh, you can either plug in 1 over tangent, or you can plug in down here cosine over sine. Now which one should we use? I'm thinking we use this one because the other words in the problem are sine and cosine. So that's why I would not use this one up here because it doesn't have a word or a trig function that matches the others. So I'm just going to substitute. So in the place of cotangent, I'm going to put what it equals, which is cosine over sine. And then I'm going to recopy the rest. So right next to this is times a sine and then plus a cosine. Now keep in mind uh, when you have a term like this, you can also write this one as a fraction by sticking it over 1. And then look what's going to happen, guys. Uh, you've got some canceling that's going to happen. So I have I did algebra at the beginning, or I couldn't do algebra. I plugged in identity. Now I'm going to try to do algebra and simplify this, okay? So what do I do? Well, I'm going to cancel those signs because there's one on top, one on bottom. And what does this leave behind? It leaves a cosine behind. Plus, there's another cosine over here. So what is cosine plus cosine? Well, there's just two cosines. And that's what it would simplify to. Okay? So let us try another one. Erase, erase, erase. All right, let me get another one up. Okay, so here is another example. Uh, we have a 1 minus sine theta times a 1 plus sine theta. Now, um, remember I always told you I try algebra in the beginning. So for me, when I look at this, I can't add anything together, but my gut is screaming FOIL. It's like you should multiply this out. And if you don't see this as a FOIL problem, feel free. One of the tricks I used to tell my students was to replace this with a variable. So if you don't like the word, since it's the same trig function here and here, you know, feel free to think of that as just an X or a Y or a R, I mean, any letter you want, and then FOIL it. Okay, so when I multiply all this out, you're going to get 1 plus x minus x minus x squared. Um, I just foiled. And then your middle terms are going to be gone. Okay, great. Now, this is what it multiplies out to, but you really need to go back and plug in the word 
that was there okay so either leave it as a sign and just multiply it out or replace it with a variable and then make sure you replace back you know what that actually was but long story short this is what this multiplies out to is this answer now I boxed this but I am not done and the reason I know I'm not done is because any time I see the number one with somebody that is squared I always look over here and see if I can use one of these functions and sure enough you're going to be able to use one of these functions um, look at the top one okay I realize that this does not look identical to the one that I boxed but they really are similar because I can take the one that's in the box and I can make it look like that okay now how do I do that well it's actually not too horrible I am going to write this one over here, sine squared u. I'll change it to a theta to match my problem. Plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now how do I make this look like what's in the green box? Well, it looks like they are, there's, there's the one that matches my one, but they want it to be a sine minus a sine squared. So if I were to do minus sine squared on this side, then I would be doing a minus sine squared on this side, right? Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. So over here, the only thing that would be left is cosine squared. And this side, the, le the right side, would now look like exactly what's in the box. So guess what? I can cross out what's in my box and replace it with the word cosine squared. Now, I, this is going to take practice, a lot of practice. You're not going to get good watching me do it. You're going to have to struggle and try plugging things in and, and all that good stuff. But this is a couple to get you going, and hopefully it helps.